we've looked at the 1010 Pelican series uh, mini survival kit, my cold proof survival kit. Now we're going to be bumping it up to the 1020. So once again, it is the holiday season and this is a great time to think about building survival kits or maybe just buying one of these little 1020s, 1010s for a loved one and let them build themselves a nice little survival kit. Anyways, we're gonna be taking a look at the contents of my Pelican 1020. Gonna show you guys what I fit in here and essentially the bones to a good beginning in building a survival kit for something like this Pelican 1020. Okay, so let's jump into it. So to start off, we're gonna look at the top side here. So of course, just like with our cold proof survival kit, we have a set of hand warmers here, and we also have a zip tie kind of incorporated up in here. Of course, just zip ties are a great tiny little self-locking piece of cordage. We also have a few little strands of orange um, duct tape. They aren't terribly big. They couldn't be used for much, but they also make a nice tinder because of the petroleum in them. So if you had to. Okay, so looking down at the actual survival kit, this is what we got. So to start off, we have some aluminum foil. This is actually about a plate sized, probably about eight inch when it's unfolded. So pretty good sized amount of aluminum foil for acting as a secondary container because the biggest thing is this uh, 1020 itself can be a container, but you can't really boil in it. Whereas if you have a little bit of aluminum, you can make a little cup for boiling water and other stuff like that. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at is this nice little um, this nice little whistle. Now this is just a tops whistle, nothing special. You can buy these uh, as standalone uh, little whistles. I like them a lot because they lay flat and they're really low profile, but they're also pretty loud. Another thing, I, if you don't like these tops whistles, I would also recommend the Fox 40 Howlers or the Minis. The Fox 40 company does an excellent job with their minis. The small ones are really loud and pretty small. They are a little bit wider than these, but they're also great. Okay, next to that we got another zip tie because you can never have too many zip ties, really. And they just make great little things, uh, great little bits of cordage. And once again, they lock on themselves. They're really nice for just securing things down. Okay, next to that we have a wet fire tab. We also have a uh, tinder quick here, so giving you a couple options for fire starting. Then next to that we have about a five foot length, five to six foot length of paracord. And then we have about five to six foot length of bank line. Then we have a ferro rod, of course just your standard, you know, light my fire army ferro rod. We got some snare wire. And then we have a mylar blanket, just like in the last kit. This isn't an amazing or impressive mylar blanket, but it's something small and it opens up so you can wrap it around yourself. It'll keep your internals warm, it'll keep you warm if you're getting cold outdoors. So then lastly to that, I thought it would be fun as I almost never incorporate fixed blades into my survival kits. I decided to incorporate the little Browse Blade Silent Soldier V2. And this little guy is very compact. Uh, the reason why I don't usually integrate fixed blades is because they're usually too big for most of the kits I like to build. But this one is a little bit different because of the way, the unorthodox way you hold it. It allows you to still have a pretty good blade with a really compact handle. So I like these browse blades. If you are thinking of, you know, going a different route, a fixed blade route for a survival kit, I would definitely recommend taking a look at getting your hands on one of these browse blade silent soldiers, especially the V2s, because the V2s are just a little bit bigger. And I find that you can get a pretty good purchase on them. And if you get something like this drop point, these things make an excellent uh, blade. Not to mention they're made out of D2. So, you know, this is a pretty good steel for woods use you could definitely baton with this thing you're not going to have a huge amount of blade but you know you do have back to here so you could kind of hold on to it and baton it if you wanted but it just gives you some options and of course if you don't want to go this route there's certainly plenty of folders that would easily fit in here and act just as well if not better for cutting purposes and tasks so anyways guys that is the 1020 built out how i would personally do a survival kit for the 1020. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, you're able to put quite a bit of really useful survival gear just tucked up in here. Uh, like I said in my last video about the 1010, I really love these Pelican cases because they're very waterproof, very shock resistant, and overall, they're really handy. So once again, I would highly recommend picking up or, you know, once again, I'd highly recommend or encourage if you're looking to build some really solid, really sturdy um, survival kits, I would highly encourage taking a look at these Pelicans. They're also, unlike other companies, they these micro series Pelican cases are actually very affordable. So if you don't want to break the bank, I mean, I believe this particular kit here, or this particular case, I should say, only cost me about 16-ish dollars. So you, know, you can get into a really sturdy, really strong, really water resistant kit or case for a kit for not that much money. So I would definitely encourage taking a look at these, uh, at the whole micro series by Pelican. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this and as always, God bless and I'm out.